I'm Alan Weiss, and this is The Writing on the Wall. Hi, I'm Alan Weiss, and this is The Writing on the Wall. Today, self-esteem, chronic problem. When I began mentoring people in 1996, I thought their key problem was that they didn't have enough money, they were undercapitalized. I was wrong. I'm constantly surprised at how stupid I was two weeks ago. The problem is self-esteem, a lack of self-worth. You have to follow your passion, not the money. That is, find something you're passionate about and you'll make money at it. But don't try to find a lot of money and believe you can grow passionate at it. It doesn't work that way. Life is short. As far as we know, we're on a huge hunk of rock traveling at 35,000 miles an hour around an exploding star. Please don't tell me you're afraid to take risks. Every morning we take risks. Every morning you're on the highway at 70 miles an hour with someone six feet off your bumper, you have supreme faith. It's time to take some risks. When you're 80% ready, you move. The final 20% you put into anything is dysfunctional. The twi final 20% in a speech, the audience doesn't appreciate. The final 20% in a book, the reader doesn't get. When you're 80% ready, move. You can always make mid-course corrections. Picasso wrote of an interesting story. His mother told him he was a genius. Nice mom. She said, you know, if you enter the clergy, you'll become pope. If you enter the army, you'll become a great general. Picasso said, I decided to become an artist, and I became Picasso. That's self-worth. That's self-esteem. Self-worth is not about hot coals. It's not about walking over hot coals or rappelling down mountains. The last time I looked, in the modern office, People went to the cafeteria down a hallway, not over hot coals. People left at the end of the day by taking the elevator, not rappelling down the side of the building. Self-worth is about tangible, pragmatic skills, not about crazy self-affirmations. You control, you see, your attire. You control your language. You control your demeanor. You control the skills that you can acquire. Most of these dynamics are within our power. Every day, police officers all over the country go to work and put their lives on the line. They have the risk of getting shot. Now an officer in New York City could work for 35 years and retire and never draw his or her gun in the line of duty. An officer in Dubuque or Ames or Peoria could be shot the next morning. You never know. In our professions, you don't get shot. What's to worry about? Be bolder. I was mentoring a woman named Joan. Joan says, I'm not getting enough for the seminars that I offer. I said, I'll tell you what, we'll role play it. I'll be the bank president, you be you. And she makes me a pitch and I said, Joan, that's exactly what this bank needs. It's perfect, how much is it? Joan says, well, it's $7,500, but if that's a problem, we can do it for less. You see where self-esteem or lack of same comes in. I worked for a firm in Princeton, New Jersey called Kepner Trigo. It was run by Ben Trigo as close to a genius as I've ever stood, a wonderful man. In the 70s, he had a strategy program. It sold for $15,000. Now, in the 70s, $15,000 was a lot of money. He used to drag me along, a 25-year-old kid, because I'd have to implement. And it always went the same way. We'd be in some office in Manhattan, and the executive would finally say to Ben, Ben, this sounds good. How much is it? And Ben would take a cigar out of his mouth and say, it's $15,000. One day, I screwed up the courage in the elevator, and I said, Ben, you know the cigar. He said, what about the cigar? I said, it's rude. He said, I need the cigar. I said, why would you need a cigar? He said, because after I say $15,000, if I don't put the cigar back, I begin to giggle. We all have those doubts. Self-worth, self-esteem, it's a problem for all of us. We have to work on it. It's all the difference. It doesn't cost money. The culture is constantly trying to dumb us down. If you listen to the evening news, if you listen to the news anchors, to the news readers, they'll say, between you and I, not between you and me, between you and I, which is wrong. Which means the writer didn't get it right, and the editor missed it, and the on-air reader couldn't correct it. So what do we have now? We have dictionaries trying to tell us that that's okay. That there is no difference between imply and infer, or prone and supine, but there is. We can't afford to be dumbed down with the rest of the culture. Get help and not self-help. You know, George Carlin has a great line. If you're reading somebody else's book, it's not self-help. That's okay. Get help with the right silverware. Get help with the right language. Get help with the right attire. Every day, ask yourself, can I gain a skill? Can I gain knowledge? Can I gain perspective? I believe in the 1% solution. Improve by 1% a day and in 70 days, you're twice as good. Do the math. 
Not everyone does that. Not enough of my clients, not enough of the people I coach or mentor. 1% a day is all you need. Here's the formula. Passion plus competence equals success. Passion plus competence equals success. Self-worth, it's what you need. Now, Colfax is waiting for me. I have to go now. Thanks for being with us. Colfax, come on, Colfax. Let's go, Colfax. Come on, Colfax. Good boy.